All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Truths to Live By. And this is your servant, Juanita Price. And so I pray that you all have had an amazing Sunday, as I have had. Uh, it's been very, very busy. But then again, what else is new, right? I think that's where we, we all kind of are these days. It's, it's very rare that I talk to anybody who is, is not absolutely swamped. And even folks that I know that have even retired find themselves extremely swamped even in their retirement. And so I am super excited to join you tonight. Um, we made it, even with a little technical difficulty, we still made it. And so thank you, Candice, for always being so faithful and, and making sure that you are there and you're letting me know if anything's going on that I'm not, I'm not aware of. I hope that um, you hear me okay. You'll let me know. I know. You're not going to let your girl be out there broadcasting and not let her know what's going on, right? But I'm so happy that you were able to join me tonight and that others um, will either catch up to it or they will catch uh, the broadcast on um, at a later time. And so this week I uh, have decided to um, go a little bit of a, a, another route, a different route, and um, actually chat with you a little bit um, and then actually address one question, and it's a big question, and and it's a very timely question that um, the talk tonight actually relates to, and so I am so happy to 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 speak to that on tonight. Okay, great. Thank you so much for sharing it. All right, so let's go ahead and and get started. So, what is um, exciting about tonight is that tonight is singles, singles night. And so I want to take some time out uh, to speak to uh, those that are singles. But you know what? I'm saying singles, but I'm not sure if I am going to just label it that. But I think that this is going to relate to singles, but as well as those that are married, maybe there are those that are, are going through something, some, some kind of challenge in their marriage. Um, I think this would be helpful as well. And you know what? Even if you are joining and you're not single or you're not experiencing any difficulty, I guarantee you, you're going to either meet someone who is or who needs this information, or maybe you know someone one now that you could pass this on to. And so uh, we're going to talk about uh, singles from the perspective of sabotaging our singleness. You know, how can you sabotage your singleness? How can you sabotage your relationships even as a single? And I know that seems like a contradiction. How could I be single, but yet, you know, um, in a relationship, and I'm referring to those that are not married and single by virtue of just not being married, so to speak. So how do I sabotage myself as a single person? You know what? I can even go on to say that some of these don't just relate to you in a relationship, but to your spiritual health, period. And so I want to kind of walk through the presentation that I have for you on tonight. And um, I want to open up actually, and I was, I was twirling this around in my mind. Do I open up with this uh, question or do I sort of break into um, what I want to share? Um, and, you know, with the question sort of midpoint, but you know what, I think I want to start it off. And so the question that came in was this, what are the signs that the longing for a relationship is distracting someone from a relationship with God. And you know what? I have to confess, when I first received that question, I actually read it wrong. Do you know how I read it? And you know what? And that goes to show you that you can either read things too quickly and make gross errors in responding because you read it wrong or you can read and see what you want to see. Now, I don't know which one I'm guilty of or not. Maybe I, maybe subconsciously I wanted to see the question this way. How I read the question was, what are the signs that a relationship 
is distracting someone from a relationship with God. But no, this question is even more challenging. It is what are the signs that the longing for a relationship is distracting someone from a relationship with God. That's even more challenging. And so I'm going to say this. I believe that the signs of a longing for a relationship can distract someone from a relationship with God is when that is all you can think about. In other words, it, 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 it that is all I can think about. Like this thing has now risen to the level of an idol that I no longer really think about how my life as a single person can actually bring God honor that I think that somehow I have to wait on this relationship before I can even begin to think about a journey with Christ in relationship. That that's all that I see that I've had. In fact, I've put things on hold, my calling, my giftings. I put everything on hold pending this relationship. And so I have just dumped 100% of myself into this thought process of I've got to find me somebody. I've got to find a man. I've got to find a woman. I've got to find a husband. I've got to find a wife. And I cannot think of anything outside that context. I have my life on hold. I have any kind of ministry that God has given, you know, me on hold. I can't think of anything but that. In fact, I might even be completely depressed about it. I might be filled with anxieties about it. I might be fill, filled with a burning, you know, in my in my anatomy, you know, because of it. That, you know, that this thing is now toying with my mind. It's toying with, you know, my 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 spirit. You know, um, the, I have just halted you know, everything, you know, for this desire of my heart that this thing has make, made me almost sick. In fact, I can't even see myself, you know, in any positive or successful or victorious light until I can see this desire fulfilled. I think that is a major way in which a longing for this relationship or having a, um, an earthly romantic relationship, a husband or a wife can begin to get in the way and affect your relationship with God. In fact, you can't even see God as being your husband, you know, your spouse, your holy spouse, if you will. I'm going to just paint that across it. Hopefully no one will um, beat me up too badly about saying that, but I don't see myself, in other words, as being even married to God at all. I don't see my commitments to him as a priority. You know, I don't see the Lord as my husband. I don't see him as my covering, you know, in any kind of way. You know, um, I, I have placed everything on hold, every desire on hold. This thing has now risen to the level of being an idol. There is a scripture, um, and it was about, Apostle Paul actually said it, and he's, he, he says this, and, and I love Paul because there are some things that sometimes Paul says, right, that people take, and they take what Paul says sometimes, and they paint it across every situation and everything and they build doctrines and rules and regulations from it and so what I loved about Paul <clears throat> a lot of times is Paul was very quick to say many times he was quick to say this is me talking now it's not the Lord or he would re make reference to himself in other words what I am saying you know it kind of it pertains to me I first of all I really love that about him because we don't do that. Sometimes we make our circumstance gospel, right? We build doctrines around our personal experiences and testimonies, which is very, 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 very dangerous. You know, Paul even goes on to give some uh, advice, you know, in scripture to even people that are in uh, marriages in which they are experiencing challenges and trouble and, and strife and things like that in a marriage, you know, and he gives, he, he, he gives instructions and he tells, you know, the woman, for example, that, you know, to kind of continue to set this godly example, you know, he's giving all of this advice um, um, to how you are and should conduct yourself at all times. And then he kind of goes on to, to speak about um, the fact that, you know, this would then sanctify him. But then he's very quick to say, well, it's not this is me talking, you know, and not the Lord. So because who knows? 
you know, if, you know, this person, your this husband will be reconciled. So he was very quick. He didn't mean that what he was sharing was not good advice. You know, it did not mean that what he was sharing was not wisdom. Do you know what I mean? But he, he wanted to be clear, you know, in saying the little disclaimer there is that while this is what you should and always should do anyway, there's really no guarantee. But guess what? What if your conduct is a form of evangelism, you know, to your, your spouse, your unbelieving spouse, the spouse you're in strife with and so forth, then guess what? They may be won by that conduct, but I love it. And then, and the same thing with his advice, you know, even to singles. And he speaks about this. He says this powerful words. He says that the single person careth for the things of God, how he might please him. And that word careth means uh, it's translated having a distracting care, a distracting care. So I, as a, am, if I'm single, I should have a distracting care for the things of God, how I might please him. And so if my mind and my soul is so cluttered with desire that pleasing God doesn't remain at the forefront of my mind and my convictions, it is likely that this desire and longing is in the way and it's a problem. You know the advice I give people and they don't want to talk to me sometimes when I share this because we're so afraid that we're not going to get what we want. I tell people, let it go. I tell people to let it go. I, I believe that while we may have a variety of desires, even the desire, you know, for a spouse, there's nothing unholy about having the desire to get married, obviously, unless the motive is unholy, of course. But what if we, nothing that we desire, we should hold so tightly so as not to have room in our heart for the Lord to say no. So I say, I always say, hold things loosely, you know, so that you are always free, you know, to both desire and to do the will of God. Have you ever seen someone want something and desire something so very badly that regardless of what God says, every decision, everything that they do will be to make this thing happen. They're, listen, if God doesn't answer, you better believe that they're going to push it through. They're going to shove it through. You know, even some people you're even afraid to share um, a prophetic word because what we get start doing is we start helping the word out, right? <laughs> And we start making decisions and plans, setting dates and doing all sorts of things as if God needs us to help him fulfill something. He doesn't need us to fulfill his will for us, but he doesn't want us to be ignorant of his will. And so therefore we should be seeking the will of God on every matter. And you know what? When we are seeking the will of God, even it, it, it can behave like a tester, okay, over, okay, even the desires that we have. Is this desire that I have a desire that represents the will of the Lord? If I find that I'm afraid to let it go, okay, to, to, I'm, if I'm afraid to leave it under the microscope, you know, of God's will, God's eye, God's word, God's whatever, something's wrong there. That goes, that, that says that this is something that I've got a really strong grip on, you know, it, and it could even be rising to the surface of um, an, an idol. You know, I started to say a lust, you know, but it's, it, I didn't want to just leave it there because it could be something else too. It could be fear um, because some people want to be married because they believe that it will take care of the feeling of loneliness. And hear me when I tell you, I know without a doubt that there are people who actually have spouses, okay? And they are actually more lonely than they were when they were single. They, they have a full body and a gorgeous body. Some of them have slang right up in the bed next to them. 
but they are lonelier than they ever were before in their lives. And I think that maybe they're more lonely because now you have this expectation that has now been disappointed. So you'll know, you will know, back to the answer to that question, when the will of God, the desires for God um, is, are blocked you know, that, 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 that this desire for the spouse is, it's so, it's weighty. It is so weighty. It weighs you down and it blocks him out. And, and, and all of you are absolutely consumed with this, you know, and that this is now, your life is now not consumed with being pleasing to the Lord and being utterly and completely committed to his will. And get this, that a part of you cannot honestly say, nevertheless, Lord, nevertheless, it's not about what I want, but thy will be done. If I can't say that, there's a problem and I need to get back on my knees and go before him. Like, Lord, I know that I'm praying for this and there are a number of reasons why I want this, but father, do you want this for me? It's my desire. And you've already said you know, that marriage is honorable. Okay. It is not an unholy thing. It is not an unholy desire, but father, is this a part of your will and your plan for me and mean it and mean it. I have actually prayed at times that the Lord would align my desires with his will, because I would notice that the things that I wanted so badly would depress me if I didn't receive it. It was a tormentor you know, imagine something that you want very badly actually tormenting you. And so I really hope that that answered your questions. Yes, and yes, and sometimes getting the spouse, I'm reading a comment, getting the spouse doesn't even fulfill that yearning for a spouse. Yes, exactly, Candace. Thank you for that. And I really wish that um, I could, like, make a T-shirt out of that. <laughs> I could make a, 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 a poster board you know, and just hang it up. You know, I wish that I would let people know this because so many are disappointed when they find out that this is the truth. And it's something about the longings and our desires. They don't often reveal the truth when we have not positioned our hearts to hear the truth, right? If we position our hearts and it says, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done, then you will hear God. And when he speaks, you will, you will see, you, you follow that which equates to the will of God. But when you want something so badly that a no is not optional, you know, chances are you're going to see that thing through until you can make it happen. And then you will discover when it's too late, you know, that this thing wasn't for you. There are so many people, and I want to just add to that today, that got married for the very wrong reasons. I'm telling you the, the wedding, you know, the wing, the rings and all the fixings actually were more valuable than that actual marriage was. And what happened is the, 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 you know, the players, you know, the husband, the wife, Everyone found out that what we expected this marriage to yield or this person to yield is just not reality. And guess what? Everyone's upset with each other. Um, we use language like we grew apart. You know, we just we just grew apart, you know, or you have one saying to the other that they're not able to fulfill their needs. And you get all kinds of, of, of cute little sayings that the TV t television has taught us, you know, um, when, you know, it's either a hardness of heart, which is nine out of ten. Um, the reason when when people decide to divorce, uh, not nine out of ten, I shouldn't say that, but there there a major reason I should say for divorce is there's simply a hardness of heart. How do you know um, even when a hardness of heart is at work um, when they don't want counseling? You know, they, you, you, someone has already given up and said, you know, um, nope, I don't want it. You know, and you you hear all kinds of things, or they say kind of mean and evil things to one another, but they they are not willing to do the work to keep the covenant that they made. And many go off into the next relationship with the same expectations, but without examining. You know, well, what happened? 
You know, wh what, it, what is marriage and what is it that I think marriage can do for me? You know, what, 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 what do I believe my spouse's responsibility is to me? And what is my responsibility to them? Do you know that for so many that this is not based in truth? It's based in fairy tales. It's based in stubborn beliefs that there are those who believe that it's all about you getting someone to do for you what it is that you feel they need to do for you to make you happy. And that is not true, completely not true. Marriage is first of all about service, giving self selflessly, in serving the other, loving the other as Christ loved the church. You know, it's about that. It's, it's, it's about sacrifice. And think about it, that if both partners in the marriage union understood that, then nobody's needs would go unmet because I'm there for you. You're there for me. We're together serving our Lord. In fact, we look at our marriage as, you know, being a service even as unto the Lord. We see our marriage as something that it brings honor and glory to God. And we know it's important to God because much of how God designed us to think is to think in terms of even the church, you know, being the bride, if you know what I mean. And so it, this, this is, it is critical that we understand this and that we get it right and that we don't go off searching for someone willing to be transformed into somebody that is supposed to meet your needs. They've got books, tons of bestsellers and things like that, you know, about your needs, you know, um, and this is about Christ, you know, it's not about her needs because God supplies our needs according to his riches and glory. But this is about two people being able to express and to live out the love of God it through that union in ways that glorify and honor Christ, you know, and then if children come out of that union, you're also raising those children to just love on God the same way, you know, and then we, we are conduits, you know, of that love towards one another, towards our children and so forth. And this is about us loving sacrificially. So I'm not approaching this, you know, with this spirit of can she or he meet my needs, you know, and, but we're not taught this on television. And so I hope, I know I probably over answered the question. I probably over answered it, but I pray that this ministers to someone, um, when it comes to the idea of marriage, what it means, you know, who it actually, who it ultimately serves and, and who's being glorified in it. All right. So let's get to, um, the message of today. We're talking about the ways in which uh, singles or people, I'm going to say singles and people so that we're not isolating others. Um, I, but it was designed kind of with singles in mind. Um, but I think that in, in many areas, if not throughout, it, it, it really speaks to the way we sabotage ourselves. All right. So what does it mean to sabotage anything? First of all, it, it definitely means to do damage to do harm, but more importantly, to block, to impair, right? All right. And so what are some of the signs? Okay. Or should I say, what are the, some of the, the ways in which sabotage manifests? Okay. Um, what, what, what are the impairing things that go on when, when something, when a person, you know, a union or a thing is being sabotaged. First of all, when it, as it relates to the plan of God, it definitely interferes with the plan of God for your life. It interferes with the plan of God for even your seasons. Imagine all your seasons are just out of, totally out of whack because we've sabotaged them. There are people that marry out of season. It's not necessarily that um, it was not God's will for you to be married, but for some, it was not God's will for you to be married when you got married, but you married out of season. And so th in that case, you may have sabotaged your season. Okay. How else? Uh, you can deprive yourself and God of an intimacy reserved 
for you and him. That's another manifestation of sabotage, okay? You can miss your opportunity to mature and to be made whole, okay? Can you see that? Here's another one. Opening, you can open the door for untimely distractions, okay? Can you think of examples where you sabotage yourself because, and the manifestation of that is that, wow, I just opened the door for these untimely distractions. I'm one of those, I'm a, a total believer that there really is a time and a season. And that when it comes to being married, I also believe that you have to prepare for it. You give it honor by preparing for it. Why would you enter into a union with all of this stuff unfinished, you know, we, you know, we, we, we approach things with our passions, you know, and our emotions. But if you really truly want to give the thing you desire honor, you prepare for it. But instead, many of us open up ourselves for untimely distractions. And then, and what I've said before, and we also miss the opportunity to be, to mature and be made whole. Do you know how many married couples are there? very immature. You can hardly even counsel some because even mentally and spiritually there it's it's you you're you're so far over their head that they they actually need to learn what it is to what it means to be men, learn what it means to be women, learn what it means to be a husband. Wife. Like they're not even there yet. But the desire seems to be more mature than the individual. Like the desire is, 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 is thousands of years old. You, you, you get what I'm saying? But the person, you know, hasn't even matured into the, the, this new identity that they're going to take on, so to speak. Another manifestation is selling yourself short. And I'm sure that one's kind of almost self-explanatory how the many, many ways that we sabotage ourselves by selling ourselves short. You know, um, media, television, Hollywood has just so taught us some real bad habits. And especially in the love department about all the stuff that we should be willing and ready to do. And we sell ourselves so short, the way women carry themselves, the way men carry themselves, you know, how we treat you know, each other, you know, their, their definitions of who would be, who's an eligible bachelor. You know, I saw something on YouTube and these things make my skin crawl. And they were referring to someone as a high value man, you know, and then, and so a lot of chatter goes on, you know, about this, this supposed to be some elevated, you know, uh, a, a man that's, that's, you know, only to be compared to some women who are able to elevate themselves to receive somebody because, you know, if he has money, you know, and he has status and things like that, he, you know, only a certain kind of woman, you know, should interest him, you know, and women, you've got some work to do to rise to the level of this high value man. It's a lot of sickening things that are out there that have relegated the value of a person to the things that they've accomplished in their lives, you know, but nothing at all intrinsically valuable at all. You know, the stuff that rusts, you know, collects dust and corrupt. This, this is, this is the, the, the low, the, you know, something that could be terminated when, you know, this thing, when, when the job ends or, you know, or someone doesn't buy your product, like we, we've relegated value you know, to that. And we're selling this garbage, you know, to, to, to women and to men. All right. Um, how about this? Opening your life to harassment by demonic spirits. Okay. Opening your life to the harassment by demonic spirits. This often happens when we make covenants with those that pos are possessed with devils. Could you be dating somebody that's demon possessed? Do you know that we date people? Some of us are dating people that are demon possessed. We're dating people and we're trying to keep track sexually with people that got lust spirits and lust demons. 
And we're thinking that we need to do all sorts of things to keep their attention. There are husbands and wives and their books that are telling these women, wives, that they have really got to ramp up on their, the toys in the bedroom and, and some of the horrific uh, things that they need to be able to do to keep these men's interests. Okay? And so now we are training people okay, to, to make themselves compatible with somebody, sexually compatible with the lust demon, you know, or compatible at all with somebody who is demon possessed. And we are forming covenants with these people. We are forming covenants with those that are possessed with devils, lying spirits, spirits of control and anger. And I mean, this is reality. Now there are people, you know, that will argue about this and they don't like talking about these things, you know, but you can tell what spirit you're, de you're dealing with, with uh, many of its manifestations. But what we all have are these visions, you know, of the beautiful dress, the diamonds, you know, the, the, the cake with the male and female cake toppers. And, you know, like we, we spend m months, some of us years planning, you know, to, for our day, ladies, where we can look like princesses. Like who, first of all, who's selling us this? An another thing, and it makes my skin crawl when, you know, we have this affinity for women being princesses and queens and raising our daughters to be princesses and queens as if that is the level of royalty, that, that royalty comes from that. You know, our royalty, okay, you know, it, it, it should be from the kingdom. It's who God is, okay? And so, but we're teaching them that, 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 that if we put on a little frilly dress and crowns and things like that, that bothers me. It bothers me to no end. First of all, the, 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 the only king is our King Jesus, okay? That's, that's how I look at it. You know, I know of royalty, you know, that exists in, in this land, but our eyes should be on King Jesus and the royalty that passes down to us as children of this most high God, all right? Um, but we are opening ourselves up, okay, to lives of harassment by demonic spirits. You, you, all of a sudden, you're, you're not understanding why you're having the kinds of battles that you're having in your mind, you know, in your emotions, you know, what something's going on in the atmosphere that you can't put your, your, your finger on. And suddenly, you know, whatever's going on and get this though, when you, when you get married, you know, and, and, and if whatever's going on, on with that spouse is it's gonna impact you you know be careful what you get hitched to understand you know who it is that you are going to say I do to you know because whatever however they're impacted that thing is going to impact you there are many of us ladies and men as well who are absolutely worn out in our lives by somebody else's devils we are respected you know, among friends and things, but the minute we stick that key in the doors of our home and we open that door, we got a whole nother spirit greeting us, you know, and, and it's painful. Um, we can't tell, many of us can't tell anybody about it. You know, some of us know that we made the wrong decision. And so we are keeping that thing a secret because we don't want people to say, I told you so. So we live in pain and silently in shame. You've just sabotaged yourself. And if you are uh, uh, realize that you are one of God's um, ambassadors, you know, that there's a ministry that he has you doing, you know, living out your life, using the gifts of God, you're going to have to contend with those things as well. Be careful. Under, don't be fooled. Don't romanticize. Re marriage can be romantic, but we shouldn't romanticize it, if that makes sense. Be careful, folks. Desire more to do the will of God. Desire more to live out God's plan for your life and want nothing that he did not wish for you. Okay? Loss of time. Do you know that poor choices, okay, has costed so many 
many, 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 many years of their lives. I mean, a lot, a lot, a lot of years. Now, God, hear me. He's a restorer. God will restore your years. He will restore that which the canker worm has eaten. You, you give that. I'm not saying that someone who's lost time should be hurt and depressed and things like that. God will get, he will give you your life back. Hear me. That's one of the things, one of the, that's one of the, that's the beauty of holiness. But I'm talking to somebody that is contemplating, you know, making these choices. You're not in it now, but you're, you're contemplating. This thing can rob you of a lot of years. Poor choices robs people of so much time. And listen, it takes so many years in many of these cases to actually recover. All right. Sabotage leads to loss of opportunities. Um, interesting. And then get this. There's another kind of fat sabotage where um, the, the let's say the you have you and I have a particular favor of God right over our lives. Um, when we sabotage ourselves, do you know that that favor of God over your life, it becomes it, it gets exploited and, and, and so rather than you enjoying the favor of God, you've got to recover from the exploitation of the favor of God. You know, I know this without a doubt that there were there some things that God held back from so many until they detached themselves from some human leeches. You know, they detached themselves from something or somebody that was causing them to hemorrhage the blessings of God or God. He just simply wouldn't, he just wouldn't release it until they shut the door. Okay. And put a lock on it, not a revolving door, not a door that opens this way and that way, but a shut that door and locked it before God would answer prayer. There are certain prayers that God will not answer until OK, you make the and I make the decision that we are to make, because the only thing that will happen is you, the, the enemy will use that person, OK, to exploit the favor of God on your life and you will get no, no enjoyment out of it. I can remember certain part points in my life where um, I, I mean, I had I did. I had some amazing opportunities. OK, Um and then there were some that I did get released, but no one knew that I was in such pain. And so while everybody else was enjoying it, you know, and, and admiring some of the things that I got to do and that I received, I was somewhere locked up in a room all by myself, not even enjoying. It was like the party was going on here and there. And I was locked up in one room um, in, in pain. I was, I was in such pain and depression you know, and sadness, that something that was so amazing, I couldn't, I couldn't even enjoy it. And I know for a fact that there were many things that God put on hold that, and would not, and did not release until I got free. And so now that I'm free, I also get to enjoy it. And the enemy cannot exploit the favor of God even upon my life and the blessings of the Lord. I pray that this is blessing you guys and that uh, those you share it with, it will also bless them. But you can sabotage yourself through uh, the making of poor choices, okay? And not, and, and not letting go of something that God is telling you to let go of, you know, um, and because it'll, it'll sabotage you. The enemy, it'll, you know, a lot of what's going on will be like the damage that even takes place will be like collateral damage even, you know? Um, so if you're sensing that I need to let something go, you need to let it go and not, don't delay, do not delay, let it go, let it go. It's not worth it. Don't fight with it. Don't grapple with it. Don't try to make sense out of, you know, why you should retain it and keep it. Let it go. Someone wrote, um, does sabotage also include relationships with friends? Absolutely. Sabotage also includes relationships with friends. Now, a, that a relationship with a friend that is an unauthorized relationship um, will, first of all, open the door up to some things that you probably, it would startle you if you knew the way, what you were open and opening the door up to. Can you, there could be some things that um, has a friend bound, right? A bondage that they're in that by connecting with them, 
you the door is now opened up for you to be harassed with some of the same harassments. And so I'll give you one example. It's not a friend example, but as um, someone who has talked to so many people and counseled so many people, there was a time in my life where I was not um, sober to this, that when you are, you pray for people, you, um, you're dealing and come into contact with all kinds of bondages of people. You need to cover your, be covered in prayer and, and filled up with the word of God. You don't know what you taking home with you and you don't want anything following you home that you didn't invite. Okay. And you certainly don't want anything in your home that you did not let in your home. And so I need to, I, it, even in ministry, I have to remember, Lord, deliver me from evil and deliver me from evil and not try to live my life and be all excited about ministry, which you should be excited about ministry without realizing that, but, but wait a minute, you're going into the a territory of darkness. Okay. Be mindful that you're going into a territory of darkness and make sure that you, you put on the whole armor of God. That's an active verb. It's not passive. It's not, this doesn't happen passively. It's active. I must put it on. It's not put on me. I have to put it on active, passive, right? I have to put on. So even in ministry, even in doing something like this, I must put on the whole armor of God so that I can what withstand the wiles of the devil. And so you can just imagine that with um, voluntary um, ungodly friendships that you can't be so swept, swept up and absorbed in the good times that you're not cognizant of the fact that this is someone that may not have given their heart to God or they, there's this, this open door to darkness and it will, in, it will impact you. You know, that's why the Bible says to not be unequally yoked, you know, with unbelievers, you know, um, that light should have no fellowship with darkness, you know. And so we, we need to be aware of this at all times that even in uh, not just in the context of of marriage, you know, but outside. Um, and I hope you guys are still with me because it gave me some weird kind of um message. But, you know, outside even the, the marriage relationship. Okay. I had a, can, are you guys still with me? It looks like I had a little disruption. It says I'm still live. So I hope you guys are still there. If you're there, say something to me. All right, but I'm going to keep going unless you tell me that you've been disconnected. So, but outside the will of God, um, outside, I'm sorry, outside the the marriage relationship, there, there are other kinds of relationships and friendships that you need to be cognizant and aware of and keep yourself, okay, I'm here, great, and keep yourself prayed up, keep yourself prayed up and make sure that whatever you're doing and, and whatever, um, you know, whatever, wherever you are, that it's something that God has endorsed and that he sent you and that you, that, that you are where you're supposed to be, you know? So yes, um, even to Candace, that there could be sabotage through friends. Definitely, definitely. So be prayerful about the, the friends that you have know at all, be very sober about who you're in relationship with. I'm not telling you that go, go back home and, and, and be a police over your friend's life and kick everybody to the curb. You know, I'm not saying that, but what I am saying is be sober about it. You know, be prayerful, know that you are where you are supposed to be and that you are connected with who God has connected you with so that that they will not be used as instruments to sabotage you. Okay. I have had um, friendships in which I was a friend to the person and, and it was revealed later on, much later on, that they were never a friend to me. 
You know, have you ever been in a friendship with someone and you love them dearly? You, you know, you would even fight for them. Um, you would do anything for them only to realize that they are grappling with all kinds of jealousies, that at the end of the day, they really don't like you. They really don't think highly of you. That really the reason why they're in your life is because they th th felt that there was something that could benefit them by connecting and partnering with you, but they really don't like who you are. And they certainly don't like the Jesus, you know, that you make a stand to serve. And then you find out, you know, you find out a lot of times through um, disagreements, you know, and then in the heat of the disagreements, all the truth comes out and so forth. You couldn't understand why you would sense all kinds of warfare, but because the person has a smile on their face the whole time and they say, I love you and they give you hugs and things like that. You know, certainly that warfare in your mind wasn't coming from them, but it was originating with them the entire time. Everybody online is saying, yes, 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 yes. So y'all know what I'm talking about. It happens. We must endeavor to walk in the will of God at all times, to be in his will. And listen, it got our friends matter to God. That's why I'm not quick to say, call somebody my friend. You know, just because I meet you in the, in the supermarket and we have a great conversation does not mean that we get to exchange phone numbers and then we're going to start hanging out. No, I need to pray about this person. You know, I need to know I need to be operating in the discernment of God. You know, because, you know, we the, the realm that the realm that you see Juanita in now my face and I your face is not the it's not the only life forms that exist. OK. There, there's such a thing as demonic spirits and they need bodies. OK, they work through people, you know, so just keep that in mind. All right. Um. So I think the last thing I said before this was that the favor of God over your life is exploited rather than enjoyed. Another way of is sabotage is, is to subject us to all kinds of trauma. You know, there are, are ways in which um, trauma has entered and um, subjected us to sabotage. It was, in fact, the trauma was intended to sabotage us. Hear me. I'm going to say this again. The trauma was sent to sabotage you. It was sent to sabotage you. I want you to digest. Have you considered that the trauma was sent to sabotage, but that it was the Lord that actually blocked it from doing what it intended to do? The Lord blocked it from what it was intended to do. You, you may have experienced something very awful because of this trauma, but can you just wrap your mind around that, but the intention was far worse? That it was far worse. You, some of you shouldn't even be here. You, you should, there, was a, there was an actual contract on your life. You shouldn't even be here, but you're here. This is real. Okay, so now let's move to the next, um, the next uh, part of this. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up. I think it's a two parts. All right, um, one this week, and then we'll finish. I think the, the next, the, the next week. Um, here are some reasons. See, singles give for wanting to be married. Reasons singles give for wanting to marry. Uh, and they many times or sabot these some of these are sabotagers. One loneliness. I said that already, right? Loneliness. Another one. I'm marrying because I think that we are going to be this power couple. You know, this the, the financial stability, the status. You know, of being married to this person. You know, we tell our little girls this. Many, many parents raise their little girls to, to think like Cinderella's. You know, and in every Cinderella, I'm sorry, Cinder. In every, my tongue is tied up. In every Cinderella story, the woman is never painted in a good light. She's always some damsel, you know, in distress. You know, that's waiting around for some prince to come along and rescue her. Excuse me, that is not the identity that God wants us ladies to walk in and to envision ourselves. We don't need to be taken care of. No one, we, that's not what this is about. 
You know, I don't know what we, this is a lie from the pits of hell. That is not the persona that the Lord wants us as ladies to possess and to get used of, used to, or to think of ourselves as, is needing someone to come along and just rescue us out of our life plight. You know, but some, some singles, um, it was about being this power couple. They married because two, oh, that two incomes are better than one. I've heard that. Well, two incomes are better than one, so they marry for financial stability. Um, there are others that marry for sexual repression. I um, can tell you out of the many people that I've counseled that getting married never resolved sexual repression, okay? There was always something else behind this hyper need for sex, Okay, but you, you don't marry for sexual repression. And I know that the scriptures say it's better. It didn't say best, but it's better to marry than to burn. Obviously not so that you're not living in sin. But I, I, I don't I don't know any marriages for it. I'm sure that there are some, but I don't know of any uh, successful, victorious marriages where the people marry just so they can have sex legally. Okay, but there are uh, there are, there are people who marry because of sexual repression. I gotta get me. I gotta find me a wife. I gotta find me a husband. But neither of them know have the faintest idea what it is to be a wife and what it is to be a husband. You know, and, and they they don't know what the biblical model of of either is. And and now you have this disaster where people just are able to have sex, but every their whole marriage is a wreck. Okay, and then when the sex get taken away, you know, as people age and you know, anything can happen, I've noticed that they don't have anything. There's nothing. They're not friends. There was never any intimacy. You know, they hate. They don't even like each other. That the only thing they had in common was sex the whole time. Even in sex therapy, in in um, and I don't know if any of you ever went through sex therapy, but in sex therapy, one of the things that there things that the therapists do is they stop you from having sex for a good period of time so that you can instead begin to build intimacy because intimacy is what love is made of. It's what marriages are made of. It's a glue, you know, because anything can happen to rob you of the, your sexual, your sexual vitality. Anything, things happen, you know, age happens, you know? So, but anyway, and then the way we are um, abusing sex and then the way that we are, um, um, should I say, exciting ourselves illegally through pornography, through the, the images and things that we're seeing on television, it's also heightening these expectations that are based on a false foundation, you know, that people are, you know, they're even showing us violating each other on television and then romanticizing it. You know, um, showing you images of, of taking someone you claim to love and throwing them up against the wall. And then that's supposed to be passion, ripping through their clothes and, and yanking them their hair. And all that's that's supposed to be passion. I, I, I watch my dogs. My dogs behave like that. You know, they're, we're watching bestiality, you know, almost at its finest, except the players are human beings. All right. Um, but people get married because of sexual re repression um, and don't know the difference between, um, you know, sexual rep repression and actual love. OK, um, some people reason singles give is that they say he or she completes me. Well, that's not quite true. You shouldn't be fragmented. So if you're not fragmented or you're not missing some pieces, you don't need to be completed. So what happens when they no longer complete you? Do you fall apart again? Okay. Um, another reason, I just love being around him and her. Okay. No. Um, we make sense together. You know, almost like a, a, a piece of literature that you've read and it has, um, you know, co co cohesive, you know, cohesiveness to it. We make sense we make sense together. Okay. God told me that this was my husband and wife. And I, I kind of put that there because, um, yes, if you are praying and you're praying for, um, God's approval on a matter, you're waiting for God's peace and you're, you sought the Lord. Yes. But I am, I put that for a reason because people just say, God told me that that was going to be my wife. Meanwhile, she's already married. 
Um, meanwhile, she's not saved. Um, and and all, meanwhile, she don't even like you. You know, I mean, we've got so many, uh, it, that, but we throw that term around, you know, that God told me that this was my husband and wife. Okay. Do you know that by and large, that's not how God communicates? That's not how he does it. But what God gives us is his word. Okay. Um, and, and, and what, what should be in place and the things that you should, you and I should be doing, you know, so that we begin to sense our readiness and God's planting of that desire in us, you know, to, 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 to want to begin thinking about marriage and praying about marriage, but not what society has made turned into kind of a bit of a doctrine. You know, God said that was going to be my wife and husband. No, you said that. And then you proceeded to make it true. Okay. I've, I've, I've known of husbands and wives that are husbands and wives together. And the wife was not attracted to the man by far. Or the man really had his eye on somebody else. Um, and, that, and these people resented each other, actually. Okay. Or later on, they acknowledged because now we can't continue to keep up the facade you know, that I don't even want to be with this person. I mean, husbands and wives tell each other. They, they got to the point now where they tell each other that they don't want each other. They're not attracted to each other and things like that. And these are the same people that said, God told me that this was my husband and wife. We got people running around saying that. Okay. And I'm again, let me be clear. I am not saying that it is impossible for that to happen, but I'm saying as a habit, like this is not like do do doctrine, you know, that we sit around asking God to name our husbands and our wives. God also gives us uh, a spiritual common sense. Whereas if my desire is to be married and I'm praying for God in advance to, um, to, to, to send me my wife or husband or to help me to recognize, if, if, is, is this her, God? Is this the right thing to do? Should I, Lord, is this somebody that you could be pleased with, God? You know, and, and ask the Lord to speak to you. But I hope you guys are getting, because I don't want to seem contradictory, but there are those who God has not spoken to running around saying that God told me that this was my husband or wife, but this was in actuality, somebody that your flesh, okay, your flesh was excited by somebody that you thought would be nice to be your wife or your husband. You set your sights on them. And really what you did was you began operating in witchcraft. In fact, I'll tell you a little story because I want to bring some sense and balance to this. So I don't have people going crazy. Like, Oh, she said that God don't tell you that bus. I'm not saying he never does it, but I am saying that there's a dangerous precedent out there today that people are abusing. And I'll never forget this. There was a store in uh, a neighboring town to where I live. And it was a st an African art store. And um, I went inside with my daughter and there was a woman in the store uh, talking to a customer. And the customer saw me and got my attention. And he said to me that she's on a fast. And oh, I've never seen anybody fast like this woman. This woman can go 30 days and she doesn't drink food. She doesn't drink water. This is what he's telling me. So my mind, I'm like, oh, I'm admiring the fact that this woman is fasting. I'm like, oh, okay, I know people can go without water this long, but that's another story. And so um, the man, so I, I assumed that the woman was a Christian. Um, and, and as I'm asking her questions about her fasting, the more she talks, the, real, the more I realize, oh, this woman's not a Christian. That's right. Duh. Christians aren't the only ones that fast. It turned out, folks, that the woman was a witch doctor. She was an actual witch doctor in my town. And her store, this is in New Jersey, her store doubled as this African art store. And as I talked to this woman, she said that there are people that come to her, get this, for people that come to her when they want to have babies, in other words, they want to be fertile. People come to her when they have enemies and they want to get back to their back again, back to their. I'm sorry, they want to get back at their enemies or retaliate against their enemies. Okay, and then finally, she said, people come to her when they want to make someone fall in love with them. And so this witch doctor is three, and then the Lord actually um, had me catch something like this. 
on television one day and it was a documentary. I wasn't even looking for it. I just turned the channel it was like, boom, you know, and it was in front of me and it was the same kind of information. So with this witch doctor, she explained to me that the spirits, not God, the spirits speak to her. When people come to her asking for her to make them have babies, to, 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 to help them to get evil against, do evil against their enemies and to get them to fall in love with her. What she, after the spirits speak to her, they speak to her and they point out to her which item in the store to send home with them. So they buy it, of course, but to send it home to them. But she then uses that article of statuary, you know, as, as she calls it, a point of contact. Okay? A point of contact. And those spirits speak to her. Okay, she's praised over these ornaments. She gives them to people, and these people will have them in the homes, in their homes, okay? And that she has seen, okay, victory in those areas. But th this is serious. Not only the, the fertilization process, but the enemy process, but what scared me, I mean, scared my socks off, is the many people that disliked or was not attracted to someone and someone that was able to go to her to, to, to pray to her foul spiritual worlds, okay, to now have this person suddenly interested and attracted to you. There's a witchcraft. There's such darkness out there, folks. You know, and, and, and it seems like, you know, we're talking to people that are narrow-minded and spooky acting and close-minded, and I am by far not an uneducated woman, okay, and I've got all of my faculties. I will tell you that I spoke to this woman. I will tell you not only that, but I know of some things that people use the evil world to accomplish that someone could actually set their sights on you and say to you and to themselves, I want her. I want her, okay, and they will come, they will make up in their minds that God said you were going to be their wife or their husband. And then they go, they want this so bad. They're praying, but they're talking to another Christ y'all. Okay. Or they're going to some witch or witch doctor. Some of them disguised as Christians. Okay. To begin to pray that way and claim you for somebody claim. Can you imagine someone man manipulating in the spirit realm to get you attracted to them. This is very, very dangerous. And I promise you, if somebody comes to you saying that to you, test the spirit. The Bible says, test every spirit that that spirit be of God. That's why if I, I even teach my daughters, all I have, I always say all of my daughters, I have one daughter, I have nieces and things like that, but they're like my daughters too. I tell them, listen, if you say no, you tell that man to respect your no. Do not make this habit out of when you give your an answer to somebody that they can negotiate what you said. Because that is disrespect at its finest and you are you're you're shaping this this type of 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 thing in your relationships. You follow that is going to result in, uh, in the utter disrespect of you and your word and what you say and how you are treated, you know. And but there are people that when you say I'm not interested, they can we, we've taught them. We've taught our boys that it's OK to push back. And as Steve Urkel would say, I'm wearing you down, baby. OK, be careful that you are not being brought under the power of some kind of witchcraft. If you say no. I want you to mean it in the spirit realm. And I want you to refuse to be convinced otherwise. You take that up with the Lord. Do you hear me? I pray that you hear me because there are people that will lay claim to you. And listen, they will be talking in a spirit realm to manipulate you. So that's why you always put on that whole armor of God to cover you you know, and, and to, to begin to pay attention, stay in your word, arm yourself with your word, you know, because sabotage comes that way as well, which brings me to the other sabotage. It matters who you marry. It matters, y'all. It matters. Marry up. And I don't mean a high value man with a dollar sign. 
but I'm talking about a man or a woman who has shown demonstrated proof and evidence that they are godly, that they love the Lord with their heart, soul, mind, and strength, and their neighbor as themselves, because if they do, then they're going to love you. And it's going to be a sacrificial love. It matters who you marry. Marriages, relationships, friendships are the one of the greatest, greatest tools in the hands of the enemy when things begin to go wrong. When even if one of them has their eyes off Christ, <clears throat> you will find yourself pulling a Mack truck. Okay, you will feel like you're pulling a Mack truck when you are connected to someone who does not know the Lord because the enemy can toy with them. He pulls their strings like they're puppets. And what do they do? They're projecting whatever they're going through. Remember, it's going to be affecting your world too. So it's important that you fast, that you pray, you know, that you have a sense of God, sense of the peace and the release of God. When you decide that this is what you desire you know, and when you meet someone, you need to be praying every step of the way and give room, time, and space to hear from God. So I'm going to actually stop right there because, you know, there's so much more to this and we will pick up, I believe, this is what I believe, I think we're going to pick up on next week um, for the other half of this. And so I'm going to pause and see if I've missed um, any questions, um, you know, or comments. Amen. Someone wrote, this stuff is so real and fatal. You better say it. Yes, people do not believe in God, but they will go to a witch doctor to do their bidding in the spirit. Isn't that something? Because they know that that witch doctor is definitely willing to do what God has said no. That witch doctor will give them a yes when God has said no. You know, And they know that they, they want to manipulate you. Do you know that God will never give anybody permission to manipulate you? He will never. God protects his sons and his daughters. He covers us from that. And you better believe you're going to have to measure up if you expect him to give you one of his sons and daughters. But they can go to a witch doctor. Y'all keep yourself prayed up and covered from these, this spiritual wickedness out there that is just waiting to pounce upon you. You cannot afford to go through this life not without your armor, without your armor. And the enemy, oh, we think that he works on the, the, the body, but he, he spends most of his time on the mind, in the mind. You know, the, the scriptures speak about that, about that, 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 that wickedness, you know, that, that you have to pull down, talks about the pulling down of strongholds and, and, and every lofty thing that lifts us up against the knowledge of God. That's speaking of intellectual warfare. And so, and we've got to cover these minds and, and, and the, what covers the minds, it, these things happen in prayer and in the a meditation on the will of God. It's the only defense against warfare of the mind. It's not talking, it, 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 it's you're, you're praying and you are meditating on, on God's precepts, line upon line. That's a defense, okay? All right, anything else before, any more comments? Just a lot of amens. All right, so this, we're gonna stop right there. And like I said, we will pick up next week. So today was just that one question, which was the perfect, I think, segue for this discussion. So join me again on this around this time next um, week uh, for uh, this 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 last half. I'm sorry, the last half of how singles sabotage themselves. All right. God bless y'all. Let's pray. Pray out. And of course, you guys pray for me. Father, thank you so much for this time. I pray, God, that this ministers to all who will hear. Let them know that somebody's praying for them. And I, I solicit their prayers for me. God, and help. show us how to pray according to your will. Not ours. Not ours, but according to your will. Direct us in prayer. Protect all of my sisters, all of my brothers. Minister to them. In the name of Jesus. And God, protect us. Protect this broadcast 
Father, we know that there are many that comb these broadcasts, even those, Father, that want everybody to know that they know better than what we know. And those that like to debate and that like to correct and that like to discredit. Father, help us, help them, Father, to, to, to operate in the same grace that they would want someone to operate in in themselves. And for all of us to know at all times that we do not hold all knowledge, that there's always a chance. There's always a chance when it comes to how we interpret something that we are probably wrong, that there's a high chance that we're wrong. It's only your truth your word that's inspired. My comments, Father, are not the inspired word of God. Their comments, their feelings are not, your, the, it's not the thing that is inspired God. We may be inspired by your inspired word of God, but it is not your Canaan and God. Help us to at all times realize that God. And with that, Lord, I continue to pray for your grace in doing something like this, your grace in teaching, your grace in understanding, and that I would be able to put forth your truth as you intended it. Bless us in the week that is ahead of us, God, and keep us and draw us all the more closer to you. And Father, show us how to love on each other. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you all, and thank you so much for joining us on this evening.